see the end. Next one is about the LH. Do we need the addition of luteinizing hormone for ovarian sti uh, stimulation and for all patients? That is to say, not only for low or responder, for all patients. And the first question will be before we discuss who use always LH for all patients. Just a little, okay. Who wants to begin an answer about LH? Well, uh, I hate to be repetitive, but I would uh, very much like to second what Professor Mashiach was trying to say here before. Uh, I think we need to get away from these kind of questions. Uh, LH, for which patient? Uh, I think for some patients, LH may be very appropriate. Uh, no, for tell us specifically. Okay, no, I give you an example. To give LH. I give you an example. Yeah. Uh, in younger patients, we reported uh, just recently uh, that uh, it appears that if you give younger patients uh, an LH containing uh, stimulation, you have lower unemployed rate. Um, that might explain why uh, LH in some studies has shown to, to, to give you better pregnancy results, or why a majority of studies show that an LH containing stimulation uh, has better pregnancy results. Uh, in older patients, you lose that uh, effect. So the question I, re I really think should be, uh, who is it that may benefit from LH? And uh, again, in my judgment, it's the younger patient. I, I would argue the other way, Norbert, because if you look at the, the evidence from the randomized trials, uh, it has been clearly shown that the benefit uh, from addition of LH is in the older women, women who are over 37, and also women who have had previous IVF failures. The younger women have no benefit from addition of LH. And if you look at it from another perspective, from the level of LH and the outcome, there has been absolutely no difference uh, with respect to pregnancy rates or success rates if you have a low or a high LH level on day eight of stimulation. But there is definite evidence on, uh, on the basis of consistent randomized trials supporting the use of additional LH in those two groups of patients, the older woman and the previous IVF failures. Beyond that, I think it becomes a judgment call of an individual as to what we should be using. In these two cases, who give LH, older women, Older, or older older. women? Older women? Older. Older. But, um, over 37, women over 35, or 37. Who gives it? Okay. Oh, that's many. Mm. One comment? Yeah. Um, Simon Fisher again. There has been some work done, and we, we, we've published quite a bit on this as well, that actually uh, there are there are differences, and I think that's why Norbert and, and, and Salim have, have got their differences of opinion too. What we found is it's actually that it depends upon the tonic LH at, uh, at, at down regulation or uh, at, at what stage you're starting stimulation because the more profoundly down regulated they are, the more they need the LH. So actually, it's not necessarily the individual grouping according to, say, age, for example, or some other parameters. It's what is the tonic LH situation at the time of stimulation, because if they are much more profoundly down-regulated, we've also found that uh, actually cleavage rates are affected too. So there is an effect upon the embryo. So I, I think it's, 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 it's more insidious than just what's happening to the quality um, of the endometrium or the quality of the ovarian function. It's, it's also to the egg itself, and the aneuploidy may come in. So it's, it's, it's not just the overall clinical perception of the patient it, in terms of age and, and certain parameters. One needs to actually understand that whether they are profoundly down-regulated according to their tonic LH levels. So when uh, when would you measure that LH level? I, if, if you're using a, a long down-regulation, for example, we would look at whether it was 1 or 0.5. And that is, there is a difference, we found a difference between uh, above one and below one, and in fact even a, small, uh, a more strongest difference between if it's lower than 0.5. But what, what day of the cycle would you be measuring that? Before, sti before stimulation. Oh, before stimulation, because the evidence that I was referring to 
was on the eight of stimulation. That level did not come into account. So maybe that the point you're making is, is, is a very useful point that we may want to look at it earlier. Yeah, uh, and I would totally agree with you because what I didn't say before is that uh, we, we found this improvement in unemployed rates in young women in long loop run down regulation. When we did the same study afterwards in antagonist cycles, we actually did not only not find that same improvement, but we actually found a detrimental effect on pregnancy rates. So uh, this is an extremely complicated <coughs> issue. If you change one thing in your soup, uh, it's what I call every program stimulation, it changes the, the taste, even if it's just a small ingredient. And so if you give agonists, it affects whether you need to use LH or not. If you give antagonist, it affects it in a different way. Uh, that's what we have failed to investigate uh, up to the present time. We have kind of looked at patients as one uniform block of respondents, and they obviously are not that. Um, my name is Robert Fischer from Hamburg, Germany. I think it's not only the absolute level of the LH the low level, but also the bioactivity of the LH. And that's why I think in the literature we have so many cut-off points to what is a low LH. And on the other side, we see in patients like PCO patients who have very high LH, they still can benefit from giving them LH. And this is also some of the patient in the young patient, and we see it in <coughs> our um, group, where we do a lot of uh, polar body biopsies for screening, that uh, in those patients who react like PCO and have 18, 20 follicles or eggs, they have a very high nucleoid rate. But once we give them in the next cycle LH, age, they have a much lower nucleoid rate. So I think this is probably the patient's using. So I think it's the bioactivity of the LH itself and not the absolute amount of LH. Because it's not the absolute level, it's probably the relative level in relationship to other hormones. I mean, we have just the paper came out electronically in human reproduction where we discussed this in very much detail, <laughs> that the LH-FSH ratio may actually be much more important than the absolute LH level. Last question or comment? Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, Lilo Mettler from Kiel, Germany. I would like to ask the panel also the question, what do they think if during a simulation the patient is not reacting with FSH, add <coughs> LH spontaneously, say day 7, day 9, do they think this is advisable? I think if you measure the LH and it's low, then it's uh, a good idea to add some LH. We have done this, uh, or we have, could see this in this... Uh, very early organon study with the antagonist. Uh, in the high dosage group of antagonists, we could see very low LH levels. And then if we add LH, there was a normal follicular development. Can you give us practical levels for the audience? Practical levels? Less than, uh, one point, oh, less than 0.5 milliunits per liter. Then you, add, you will add LH. Yes. And how much per? Per 75, day 75 units. 75 units per day. Okay. Yes. HMG. Yes. You can use all the LH. Well, wasn't life very much more simple in the old days when we didn't have FSH only pregnant, <laughs> when we all used HMG? It's only because we've got highly purified FSH Those or, were the days. or recombinant. I mean, I'm a big recombinant fan and we don't use HMG. But to turn the question slightly is, should we not be thinking, therefore, of giving everyone HMG instead of pure FSH or recombinant FSH? Because there doesn't seem to be any detrimental, in fact, some people would say there's a big advantage to putting everyone on HMG. The certain drug companies, who should be nameless, um, would say, use HMG on everyone and you'll get better results. Other people show there's no difference, and I'd like to think there's no big difference. It's certainly cheaper. It's certainly cheaper, but...